This year marks a historic year for golf. The oldest major championship is turning 150, the Open. It is not long now until we will know who the champion golfer of the year is and they'll be lifting the claret jug right behind me. In the 150 years of the Open Championship, golf has changed a lot. From the equipment we use, the layout of the golf courses, to what we actually wear on the golf course. In this series, I'm gonna be learning all about the 150th and also what they wore the first ever Open Championship, even testing out what it's like to wear that clothing, to what we could possibly see the players wearing at the 150th. I'm here at Presswick where I'm going to be learning all about the 150th and I'm even going to be going out there to play the course where all began. I am super excited to talk to you today about the history of the Open, Ken. The first Open, what was the first Open like? Well, as I say, eight golfers played. Mm -hmm. um, everyone expected Tom Morris to win of because course. he had come down, he'd laid out the 12 hole golf course. Um, which was about 3,800 yards, um, but he didn't win, he was second. Willie Park from Musselboro won. Um, that was maybe a bit of a slap in the, <laughs> in the face to the genteel people of Prestwick. I mean, there was a keen rivalry between Prestwick, I suppose, and St Andrews. And Musselboro, it was a mining commuti community, so I, I wonder if they maybe looked down their nose a bit oh. at them. But yeah, so the lad from the East came through and he won. Um, and so he won the belt, the, the championship belt, the challenge yeah. belt. That's a replica of, of the belt. Um, it cost 25 pounds, <laughs> um, which in those days was a yeah. tremendous amount of money. The, I mean, the average earnings probably in the 1860s for a working man was about 10 pounds a year. Oh wow, so that so was a significant amount. So something event. like that, huge amount of money. There was no prize money in that first Open, um, but the winner got the belt. Yeah. And they got to take the belt away as long as they left £25 <laughs> to make sure that the belt reappeared <laughs> the following year. And most of the golf that was played in those days was match play. There were challenge matches that were played. And there would usually be a number of wagers put on. So. I might put my man up against your man and we'll play for 25 guineas. Okay. That might be the wager, you see. So if my man won, I would give him a share of my winnings. But it was, it was almost at my discretion how much I actually gave. Okay. <laughs> if you were the holder of the belt, you could probably negotiate <laughs> a bit more from your gentleman. And you would have bets of your own going on as well oh, with I'm the other sure. caddies and the like. Um, so, I, I don't know if that was really the thinking why there was no prize money. And then a couple of years later, prize money was introduced, okay. but not for the winner. The winner didn't get any prize money, the first time prize money. Second, third and fourth got prize money, but no, you're, you get, you're getting the belt. You're getting the belt. And you'll get a bigger, <laughs> you'll get a bigger share of, of uh, your gentleman's winnings, oh, per, okay. perhaps. And then prize money was introduced, so the winner did get. Uh, prize, prize money after that. Yeah, they mm. obviously play for a significant amount of prize money now, um, yeah. but I still think that if you ask anybody that's playing in it, they're playing for the claret jug. Yeah, yeah. But oh, ab absolutely. And particularly the guys who you know are financially secure. Um, it's, it's about the win. The it's, Tiger, it's, it's all about the W. I think it's time to change and I'm going to change into what I normally wear on the golf course whenever I'm playing around and especially when I'm playing competitively. 
Now I am in my comfort zone. I know it's a little bit boring in comparison to what I had on earlier, but I've got a nice long sleeve, breathable Adidas top on. I've got my go-to Adidas trousers, which are super comfy. I think that's one thing that I noticed with the earlier outfit. Like I was struggling to get down to like mark my ball and line it up the putts. And when I was swinging, it was really restrictive. This is so loose and so free. And again, made for athletes so made for me to play at my best as a golfer on the course. I've also got my Tour 360s on as well. I absolutely love these golf shoes. These give me the best grip when swinging. So of course, this is the outfit that I wear when I want to perform my best. Oh, and I nearly forgot, cap. Oh, always, always a cap. Usually a black cap, that's my go-to. I do feel like I'm gonna miss the flap cap though because can I feel like I pulled it off? <laughs> my life today. <sighs> yes, this current outfit might be a tad boring, but this is what I feel comfortable with wearing day to day on the golf course. And then also like, this is what I would wear when I was competing as well, because it's functional. <laughs> um, my shoes have got the best grip, my 360s, but it's also, very very comfortable the one thing that i love about being an adidas ambassador is the versatility of their clothing we've seen a huge difference in women's clothing i'd probably even say in the last five years um there's more options there's more statement pieces there's more it's becoming more fashionable and it's going to be interesting to see where we're going to be in the next five years on the golf course, but we are seeing a movement where people are definitely showing off their personality and wearing what's comfortable and also saying no to dress codes. My next outfit definitely says that and it's where I see the future of golf going. But if you ask people what they think a golfer wears, a stereotypical golfer, everyone says plus fours. But through my research, I realized plus fours didn't actually come into fashion until a little bit later. Mm. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. The plus fours developed um, or were at their most fashionable in, as I say, in this period in the 20s um, onwards. But men were wearing knickerbocker uh, trousers, which was their a full official title, which are these short trousers to the knee. And they sort of developed from lots of outdoor pursuits, from hunting, uh, mountaineering, bicycling, uh, cycling. Uh, and so we have from about the 19, early 1900s, men wearing uh, knickerbockers or plus twos on the course. Um, and a, a plus two means that there's two inches of extra fabric at the knee and they're sort of more um, closely fitted to the body. Plus fours are much baggier um, and perhaps even go over the knee and have four inches of extra fabric. Okay. Um, there's, it was interesting, I did a little bit of research a few years ago and it's quite interesting when we think about the Great Triumvirate era, so Harry Varden, James Braid and J.H. Taylor. 
Taylor and Braid won the Open five times and they wore trousers, but Harry Varden won six times and he still holds the record of the most Open Championship victories and he loved to wear plus twos um, and so these knickerbocker trousers and there was an article um, in one of the golfing magazines about the benefits of wearing um, plus twos compar compared to trousers and actually a lot of the writers were saying we don't like these modern plus twos, we don't like the, these knickerbocker trousers but, but um, Harry Varden was obviously a hugely popular proponent of them and he again wrote about the benefits of having a tight jacket on and um, a coloured shirt and it meant that it gave him support okay. so I think if you have a shot of wearing a tweed jacket that you might find that that you actually find benefit in your swing so it's a supportive item rather than restrictive so um, but yeah the plus fours are what everybody thinks of if you ask someone to draw a picture of a golfer or dress as a golfer for Halloween it's yes. always the plus four and, and you see it in popular culture as well and in, in uh, film of, of that period or um, in literature um, even you know Hollywood movie stars wearing going to play golf being pictured being golfers it was because it was fashionable and yeah. um, it was you know the the, the sort of most fashionable item to be seen to be wearing as well as fair isle jumpers so and the highly patterned jumpers um, and all the Scottish knitwear companies like Pringle, Lyle and Scott began to produce um, knitwear for, for, yeah. for men and women. So moving into that obviously we started to see uh, in the modern era of golf, golfers really showing off their personality, being a little bit out the box with fashion statements. Um, you've mentioned a few earlier. Who do you think, um, over the 150 years of 150 years of the Open, who has the most iconic like outfit of the Open, which you think stands out? Is there somebody? Somebody for me, I think, would be Seve Ballesteros in 1984, winning here at St Andrews. And I think the whole f combination of that event, him winning, his, his um, uh, punching the air, that, that yeah. iconic moment. But his navy kind of outfit, although quite simple, I think it is seared into the memory of so many people people and so many fans of the Open. Yeah. I know from my parents and their generation that was such a big um, moment for, for European golf um, and for, for Seve fans. Um, and moving into a more sort of modern era, Nick Faldo and his his jumpers that yeah, he Pringle. wore, the Pringle outfits, <laughs> his association with Pringle, we have a, a, a shirt, a polo shirt. Know, it's great. Which is very display. subdued in, in, in compared to the pictures that I've seen yes. of what he wore on the Smoking <laughs> Bridge, um, which I think now is maybe coming back into fashion. Um, I think it is, I think the general <laughs> Which <90s>. is scary. <laughs> It's probably scary for for the golfers themselves, but yeah. yes, I think that that for that era of people, the, that is another kind of uh, golden era of, of of golf clothing. But then, in, as we move into the two uh, thousands, Tiger Woods and his association with Nike and that influence of brands on on golf sportswear, and it becoming much more, I suppose, about their athleticism on yeah. the course um, and showing off that they are athletes and that they work out. And um, I think that his red colour that he wears yeah. in the final of any major is also such an iconic choice um, uh, so I think those would be my three obviously if we're thinking back there's lots of colorful moments that players um, wore bright colors like Doug Sanders and um, or uh, Jack Nicholas but I think those would be my my picks yeah no I think that yeah Seve is it's just such an iconic moment not just with what he was wearing and Tiger of course everybody knows about Sunday Red and mm -hmm. um, hopefully we'll be seeing him in a Sunday Red I know. fingers crossed it, it would be amazing I know that he's obviously planning to be here um, but hopefully we'll see him be here play and hopefully make the cut so we can see that iconic Sunday Red on the Swilcombe Bridge um, a special moment I think. yes it will